Hey guys, we're back out on the silent air compressor, part four completion. Uh, you're gonna get to hear this thing run, and I have to tell you, it is very, very quiet. Uh, initially, it wasn't that way due to this check valve. Um, I made a modification, and that was actually removing the snap ring in there and there's a washer in there that hold the poppet up against this side and what was happening is this this thing was hammering like a resonant frequency with each compression stroke it would push the valve open then it would slam closed and the spring tension on there uh, was making this thing sound too loud for me. It's like a loud set of hair clippers. It was a buzz. So that's what I did to fix that. Um, when you hear this, mostly what you're going to hear is the air coming into this. And if you're wondering what that is, it's just a paint gun, uh, water, oil separator. Uh, this compressor seems to pick up a lot of water. Uh, in the atmosphere so I don't know how effective that's gonna be I'm hoping that it's gonna mitigate some of the the moisture precipitating out and coming through this valve you I mean you could see it so we'll see how that works out and what I did is just got a PVC a one inch cap threaded it with a quarter inch pipe thread and put a, a piece of filter foam in the bottom of that and just screwed that on there to keep all the dust out of this. But like I said, I don't know how effective it's going to be. I ended up getting 150 milliliters of oil out of here. Uh, how you get that back in, or how I got it back in, was just hook the Mighty Vac up to that inlet. I have a compression fitting with a hose that I just screw on that, put it in the cup. And just hand pump it using Mighty Vac and it vacuums that in here. I think you can probably let it do it on its own. It'll probably vacuum in just with the pump running, but it's much easier for me to do it that way. And I have the stuff for it, but uh, pouring 150 milliliters of oil back in here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can do that or it's going to take a long time. So. Either vacuum it in with a Mighty Vac or switch this on and maybe block this port and vacuum them in uh, through that way. Uh, but with no oil in it at all, I didn't want to switch this on. So uh, I think the Mighty Vac's the way to go. There's the feet sandwiched in there. Like I said in a previous video, just tap through. So that provides the mounting. Hardline plumbing coming back around. Ended up using a plastic line for the unloader. Uh, I didn't have a way to to bend the copper line the way I wanted, and it's just another line that I have to if I have to take this off because this is kind of a pain in the you know what to to get off of here. It's not not too bad I guess, but to get it on was uh, you just remove the four mounts. The feet, you'll have to unplug the power from back there. Just take that cap off, loosen that, and slide it off. But you'll have to uh, remove that safety valve so you have enough room to, to slide the pump forward. And that is repurposed from the original Harbor Freight. I used the original screws that were used for mounting. I think they're six millimeter. Um, so it's just one less thing I had to buy. Uh, I reused the gauges from the Harbor Freight. Also, I took the stickers off the tank. That is from my Badger 180-11 um, regulator, the quick disconnect. Walk around on this side here. 
That's the power going back to the pump itself. I just ran it underneath there. And it just comes back around. If you look at my original parts, you'll see the grommet. I mean, it just holds in there perfect. So I took that off the Harbor Freight. Um, super glued it on there. Uh, it seems to be holding good. Repurposed the hose, the, not the hose, but the power line from the Harbor Freight. I ended up using, like I said, those strain reliefs. Instead of the rubber grommets that were in there, that's that was no good to me. A little shot of the backside there. Repainted this pump the best I could, so looks way better than it did. So I think this came out pretty, pretty professional looking. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the noise level, which is virtually zero. Uh, you're going to hear more of airflow coming in through this uh, moisture trap than you are going to hear this, this pump running. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this on for you. We'll, it takes about two minutes. I have it down to about 70 PSI. So I have 70 cut in. Uh, 100 cut out. I mean, you could obviously set it up to, I think this tank could probably take 120 PSI, probably more than that, but I won't be needing that for an airbrush. Total time to deplete this tank to cut in from 100 at 20 PSI on an airbrush continuous, about four minutes. Uh, pump up from 70 to 100, approximately two minutes. And that's still with, you know, use, but not wide open. I, I didn't check it wide open, but, or, you know, using it continuous with my hand out on it. So I don't think anybody's going to use an airbrush that way anyway. I, I don't know. I'm not an artist like that. So maybe some people do, some don't, but. I think this will fit the bill. Like I said, this is one of the smaller compressors um, out of a freezer. Some guys have made them with a larger refrigerator compressors. They're bigger than this. I'm not sure if you could get that on this tank. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, this one just barely fit. And this thing is, is, it's heavy. It's pretty heavy. I ended up not having to offset this handle at all. Uh, by the time I got the pressure switch and the regulator and everything else up front, it, it balances out pretty close to what it should be. So I just removed the handle just so you guys could, you know, get a look at the plumbing and how I routed it. So we'll go ahead and switch it on. Um, let you hear it. I may have to take a little more out of here. Let me see. Okay. There it is. It's on. That's what it sounds like. Virtually silent. You still hear maybe a slight little buzz. Again, it's still that check valve. There's no way around that. Uh, and I think a little bit of it now is I can actually hear this motor running. You can hear the air rushing through here more than you can hear anything else. I don't know how loud that's going to sound on the video. But with me sitting in front of this, you could run this thing in a dentist's office. So, I believe mission accomplished. I didn't add up exactly how much this cost me. I'd, I'd venture to say 150 bucks. On the high end, 130 to 150, and that's with this compressor that was repurposed, which was zero. But I had to buy the tank. Uh, some of the other parts were repurposed, but 99% of them 
I had to buy. So, other than the regulator, but all the fittings and everything else, you know, and that starts adding up. So, I'd say, I'd say 150 bucks. But, you know, to get something like this and buy it online or whatever, you know, this thing's going to cost you 400, 500 bucks. And I think it uh, is going to serve the purpose in which I built. Perfect. So I guess that about wraps it up. Um, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll answer them for you best I can. If anybody's thinking about building something like this, uh, maybe you have some ideas. At least it'll give you some ideas on the, the route you want to go. You can use rubber hoses. You can use whatever I didn't want to do that so I ended up purchasing fittings for Hardline so that sums it up thanks for watching